Everyone is really excited about the new Autel Evo 2 as it's just now starting to hit the streets. Now there's three different models that are out there. We've got a couple of them here. We've got the uh, Evo 2 Pro, which is the one inch 6K. And then over here we have the Evo 2 Dual, which is the thermal camera along with the uh, one half over three 8K camera system. Both of them fantastic drones. We've been working with them. There have been some changes on the software sides. And in this short little segment, we're gonna talk about what's going on in the software and particularly the mission planning of the Evo 2. Before I get rolling too far, uh, I have had several emails from people asking about how we're using the Evo in the field. And so there's a couple of different setups that I've got laid out here to, to show you what we do. When I'm working out on a, a site all by myself and I'm the only person, I'm operating with this Four Hawks system that allows me to take the Evo remote and allows me to put a larger tablet uh, in, into the remote control system. And this works really well with an over-the-shoulder uh, lanyard system. It's not something that you probably want to work with when you're dealing with just a, um, a single system. It, it, a single lanyard becomes very painful and, and tiresome around your neck. So the other way that I work though, especially when we're in environments where I know that I'm gonna have someone looking over my shoulder, is I've got a tripod mounted system here that allows me to put my tablet on a tripod and then I've got a very long uh, 15 foot cable that connects to the remote and what I've done here is I loop the cable around and turn the handle so that it becomes a strain relief and contains that cable. That makes it a little bit easier for me to operate uh, and, and makes it a lot easier when you're going to have a construction site supervisor or a lieutenant or somebody else looking over your shoulder. Now they can see what's happening on the tablet instead of peering over your shoulder and, and occasionally bumping into you and so forth. So let's get this right off the table here and let's get dive right into it. So when we first open up the mission planner here, or open up the, uh, the software here. You can see that we've got camera and mission that's in front of us. This is the same as, as it would be with a standard Evo. And we're gonna click first on mission. And this opens up create new mission. We've got generally three choices here, waypoint, rectangular, and polygon. We're going to tap on polygon to create a polygon mission. Compass abnormality. It's letting us know that the compass in this particular room is not gonna function. So we'll just shut that down. And let's come over here and let's set up our mission in this, uh, this lot that we want to fly just around the corner from where we're at here. So we're going to create a project and you see immediately that that comes up with a, a grid pattern. Again, very much like what is in the EVO 1. We can tap on corners and, and, go, and go through and adjust exactly where each of those corners might be. Now, this is set up for polygons. So you'll notice that there's a plus symbol in between each one of the grid lines. So if we tap on those grid points there, that allows us to set another control point. So I'm gonna set that control point up there. I'm gonna tap again right here on that same plus symbol. And that allows me now to create a polygon. So I'm ca able to capture all of that section that I want to work within. Let's just tighten that up just a little bit. There we go. All right, now we need to adjust the parameters of our mission, and this is where things are very different from what they have been with the EVO 1. So down here in the center, we're gonna click on the mission adjustment, and you'll see that we now have a bar down on the lower part of the screen, which allows us to control various aspects of our mission. Now this particular mission, I want to set up and we're going to fly this one at 100 feet. That'll give us a, a really nice ground sample resolution. So as I slide that, you can see our, our indicator telling us what our altitude is. There we go. I've got that set up at 100 feet. And that tells us that we're at 0.4 centimeters per pixel. Now, I might not want to fly at 11 miles per hour. Maybe I want to fly at a different speed. But again, we tap on the speed, slide this back and forth, and we see the same indication on the screen. So I'm going to fly this one say at 9 miles per hour. I'm very happy with an 80% front overlap and in this particular case since we're flying ortho I'm just going to fly with a 70% overlap. Next I've got a gimbal pitch control 
And although 90 is standard for nadirs or naders, I prefer to set mine up to 80 degrees. So I'll set that in right there at 80 degrees. Excellent. And then last but not least, I'll choose what happens when the mission is complete. So I'm going to tell it in this case to go home. I could ask it just simply to hover in place. So we're gonna leave it in the, the go home mode. And that takes us through pretty well everything that's in the menu. So we've got altitude, our resolution, our speed, what our overlap and side lap are going to be, or our front lap and side lap. We have the gimbal pitch and then the finish the course action. Now next to it, there's a course angle. What this allows us to do is it allows us to adjust the angle of our course. Now, why would you want to do this? I get asked about course angling all the time. Whenever we're flying, we never want to fly directly into a, he a headwind, which corresponds with having a direct tailwind. We always want to crab the aircraft. So generally what we're looking for is we're looking for one of the arms to be leading the direction, or if we can't do that, then we want the nose leading the direction into the wind. And so in this case, what we're going to do is if we've got a wind that's coming directly from the north, we're going to use this angle adjustment so that we can control the, the, uh, the pitch or excuse me, the, uh, the course angle, and something like that. This way we have equal wind pressure in all directions for the aircraft. That will flatten out our images a little bit better so when we go to assemble them in Agisoft or Pix4D or some of the other tools, we get a, a much flatter profile out of our images. So that's what this course angle is for. Now there are a few places where the, this mission controller isn't awesome. First of all, right now, as of this, this moment, the, uh, the mission is only capable of single battery mission. Now we do have 40 minutes on, on the batteries on the EVO 2, so that's probably going to take care of a lot of missions. But we look forward to a future update of the Autel Mission Planner that will allow us to have multi-battery missions. All right, now we've got our, our mission set up, so let's turn back to it here, and we're gonna click on the blue check mark, and we're finished. Now here's the next place where the EVO 2 mission planner is very different. With the EVO 1 mission planner, we have to launch the aircraft into the air and uh, do our controllability checks, etc., and then we trigger the mission. So to start our mission, we press the blue fly button that we see there on the right-hand side, and the aircraft will automatically take off and begin its mission. So this is quite different from the original EVO 1 mission planner. Now if we look up above that, this becomes an important component in planning on our mission. We can see that this particular area that we want to fly with a single direction nadir is going to take uh, about nine minutes to overall fly. And it tells us the square footage and it tells us that it's going to be taking approximately 157 photos that are there. So I'm very happy with everything that I see. I'm going to tap the save button. And for the moment, I'll call this new mission one, just leave it default, there we go. Okay, so we've now got this ready to go. Now we'll press the blue button. It comes up and we can see that everything here on our pre-flight check is good, except for our compass. And our compass is going to be uh, abnormal because it's, the, the aircraft is sitting on top of a steel table. So now we're ready to go, we tap on fly, And the mission is uploaded to the drone, and the, the uh, props will begin to spin, and the drone will take off all by itself. So again, this is very, very different than how the EVO-1 works, where we launch the aircraft, then tap fly. So we've got a couple different flight checks that are, that are happening with the drone. Now, our practice internally is we're going to check out everything on the aircraft on the ground, check our props, check our, our gimbal, all the normal safety precautions. Then we're going to launch the drone, do a controllability check, then bring it back down to the ground, and then we will start our mission. So again, we're going to get this pre-flight check that Autel has provided for us that goes through and, and checks everything about the aircraft. Do we have a memory card in there? Do we have an IMU uh, lock? Do we have good GPS? Yep, what's gonna happen with our loss of action? What's our finish action? It's gonna go home. Do we have good in, image transmission? Yes, we do. Uh, we, again, the compass abnormality is due to the aircraft currently sitting on a steel table, and it shows us that our aircraft battery is currently at 43%. Uh, for purposes of reference, I would not fly this mission with a battery only at 43%. Although there's enough battery there to fly it, I recommend starting every mission with a fresh battery. 
Needless to say, this gets you through some of the, the new features that are found in the software with the Autel Evo 2. Now, as uh, future versions of the software roll out, we're happy to share more with you. There's quite a bit that's happening under the hood of this beast, and there's quite a few software changes that are going on inside the Autel Explorer app. So until next time, thanks for tuning in, and be safe out there. Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel. Those of us here at Sundance Media Group are always happy to see new people come and watch. Make sure you click that new subscriber button down below if you want to stay in touch with what's happening in the UA industry.